Good morning, coaches. I'm Jay McKinnis with the Transportation Department. And uh, as Mr. Kutsaratis alluded to, I'm going to go over some of the options you have when it pertains to traveling to your games or your activities as far as using buses, cars, etc. I think each one of you were provided with a student activity transportation memo. I think each one of you were provided with a technical assistance paper. It's labeled student activity transportation. It's in your packet. And this is a, uh, a form that we came up with um, two years ago to kind of clarify some of these options on what you could do as far as getting to your games and your activities. I'm going to read down the option list here. Um, basically, the first option is you take a school bus with one of our drivers and you submit your form to our department like many of you do already and we come and pick you up and take you to the game. Uh, option two would be you take one of our buses and you as a coach or uh, one of your um, other teachers or assistants who is a valid CDL license holder can drive that bus. So that's option two. Option three would be a you can take a bus from us and do a drop off in county only, but we don't allow you to do that out of county. And I know the middle schools now have started uh, playing Walton County more. And, and we've had uh, back in the fall, one of the coaches wanted to go to Walton County and be dropped off. And we said, no, we're not gonna do that. And the reason we don't do that is because if you're out of county, we don't have any way to get to you in, in a relatively short time if there's an emergency or uh, if you're playing outside and the weather comes up a storm uh, uh, whatever we don't want you to be stranded out of county without transportation uh, so that's why we do that um, so just bear in mind it's not that we're trying to make more money or, or do anything else it's just we do it as, as a safety hazard uh, to protect those children and yourself if you're out of county so if you turn over to the next page, option four talks about students being transported in privately owned vehicles. This may be uh, you've got a parent <clears throat> that wants to take, in essence, the, the swim coach that brought this up a minute ago, some students to uh, a swim meet on Saturdays. Well, if that's the case, they can take their own child, but they can't take two or three other parents' children unless they have sent in, first of all, their license to the school and the school will contact us to get us to check their license. Because we can't have a parent out there driving students that's got, um, you know, a bad driving record. It's had two DUIs and had 10 tickets in the last year and a half and they're driving four or five of our, our uh, swimmers to a meet and then something happens, well, you know, we haven't done our due diligence, so that's an option that you have as a coach. If you want that to happen, simply get with your staff or your principal. They will contact our safety CDL trainer, um, and we will check that parent's license out. It usually takes about a week to do that, and then we'll give you all the clearance. Yes, hey, they're good to go. Uh, their license clear, uh, checked out. So that's option so four. Again, yes. That just needs to be done one time yes. that season one time for the school year and then we will roll it over at the end of the summer when we start again in August we will ask everybody to, and then I will say this because this has just come up recently some of you may live up in um, across the Alabama border whether it be Florella or wing or somewhere um, if you're coaching down here then we don't have access to your DMV files through the state of Alabama so if you want to do that um, and provide us with something for uh, driving in vehicles or driving some of your team members or say you're going to Mobile for a tournament and you want to get a van or whatever and you're going to drive, well, you've got to provide us with that information from the DMV in Alabama or wherever you're at because we can't get that to verify that your license is, is, um, is you know, up to date and a clean record and things like that. So that's important to know if you don't live in in, in the state here. So, um, but like Mr. Kucherata said, you know, if you call us, 
a day before you're going to drive somewhere and say, oh, here's my license number, run it real quick. We, we can't get it verified that quick. We actually have to input it into the DMV website through our office, and then we wait for them to check it out and send us the report back whether it's clean or not. They'll actually send us a report of your driving record with everything that you've had on there. And then we look at that to verify that it's a clean driving record. The main thing we look at is if you had no DUIs in the last 10 years and you've not had three moving violations within the last three years. That's kind of the, the standards that we use when we're hiring bus drivers. Uh, that's the first thing we look at on their driving record. So same would apply for parents that want to drive or any of you guys that want to drive that don't have a CDL. All right, I'm moving on to option five. If you as a coach want to go somewhere and take a, a rented leased vehicle um, that you get from a rental company or, or whatever, where it's a coaching clinic or um, it's a, a uh, tournament you're going to and you're going to rent something to drive, procedures that I just talked about are in place. You can do that but you've got to provide us with your license and let us check it out to make sure it's okay um, before you get ready to go. So those are your four or five options that you have when traveling to a game or to a uh, tournament. Um, has anybody got any questions on the options so far that we've discussed? Yes. Uh, for option four, I'm just making sure that if you're having parents drive their own children, they still have to fill out the form. Not their own children, someone else's child. So then my question is, uh, let's say I, I say that the parents are going to drive their own children, but then Tom shows up with John's kid. Whose liability, who, who does that call upon? The school and the principal. So how do I make sure that, that the kids are in fact riding the people that they say they are riding? You, you're just going to have to uh, emphasize that as the coach to your parents, whether it being a meeting with the parents or your players. Well, so that. Yes. Okay. It will fall on the school and on you as a coach and on the principal, in your case, Mr. Whitten. Okay. If something was to happen and a parent's driving a car with three or four players in it and they get into a wreck, if we haven't filled out the right forms and done the right procedures, then you're going to be liable for that. And the school, the school district and the school will be liable for that. I guess I'm saying that the right way, am I not, Mr. McKenna? Yeah. Okay. If I was the coach and I had a bus there, that's what I would do. I mean, I'm not naive enough to believe that parents aren't taking other kids with them to, to games. And you guys may not be able to stop that completely. I understand parents do what they want to do sometimes. We all know that. But what I would say is in that case, if a child showed up with another parent in a car that wasn't their child, and you did have a bus there, I would request that they come back on the bus. Let, let me just interject a little bit. Um, most most coaches have have a rule. Hey, if we're if I'm taking a bus, you're on the bus. You're on my bus. Everybody's on the bus, and we're going to this event. And then some coaches then will allow those kids to. <coughs> sign out with the parent only but not you know i can't sign send, sign my son's best friend out and he drive home with me but i can take my child and so i think it's i think it go, falls back on you guys to make sure you have some rules in place and have that parent meeting uh, before the season and say these are my policies you're going to ride the bus with me or whatever method of transportation it is but if it is a bus you're going to ride with you know with me on the bus some varsity coaches um, in high school say, you know, JV can they can be checked out with their parents because they can, you know, their game ends earlier. But that all those varsity kids are riding home on the bus for team unity or whatever. But that's a coach's decision. We can um, we can give you some copies of forms that that some other coaches have used. And and so part of when I used to coach, I'd have a parent meeting, and there were forms that they signed on what our policies and procedures were here. I need parent, your son's not playing, daughter's not playing, unless I have your signature that you and he both sign the form and that they understand what the rules are. And so I think that's good practice. I think a lot of you already do that, 
And if you don't, I think that's a good idea. I know Mr. Humphrey. Actually, when I was coaching, I called Brian, and Brian, Brian wasn't in this position, but he forwarded me some some samples of forms that I adopted and used on my team. So I know Brian has some copies of things that might work for you. So will that protect us in the instance that a kid shows up with another parent? Well, if a kid shows up with another parent, you can't. That, that, that's out of your control. But well, what is in your control is to say, you didn't ride the bus, you're not playing. It, that I can tell you that's not going to happen again. If they want to play and you don't let them play because they didn't follow the rules, they won't be doing it again. And, and I think that, again, falls on the coach to make sure that that, that happens. Does that make sense? Well, I, it does make sense. But I, what I'm asking is if they get in a wreck and they're with another parent and, you're, and it falls on the school and on us right. that they weren't well, that, that and then I, I would have to defer to Mr. McGinnis, but I think that would help to, if you have rules and policies and procedures and you don't let children play who just randomly show up and you have, you know, you have policies that say you're going to ride the bus and, or you're not playing. What do you think, Mr. McGinnis? The form you're talking about certainly would provide additional defense, but the, the negative side to using those forms is if you use them, then you've got to be enforcing that rule consistently because if you use the form and then you turn your, your head to a situation where it happens, the form is worthless for you for the rest of the season because you, you might as well not even have used the form. So I would encourage you to use a form like that. I think it does line us up one more defense if we have a problem. I'm not going to say it's going to be the, the sure fire proof, but, but it, it helps us. And particularly what helps us is if you then consistently enforce that rule throughout your season. The inconsistency with the way we apply rules is where we get into all the legal trouble. Yeah, and I follow your question, but please understand there is, is a, an entirely different use of that form in the front office which allows someone to check a kid out of school. And what we're talking about, how you're going to release someone from an athletic event on a weekend or, or out of county or somewhere else. Um, and I'm not, without further work on how to do that, I'm certainly not comfortable with anybody saying, well, I, my, my pickup card, my emergency contact card says that my neighbor can bring them from school. That doesn't mean, though, the parent is planning on that happening from something happening on Saturday at a different time. So I would not get those two mixed whatsoever. I mean, it's cer certainly something that, that we can look at, but please, for right now, don't make that confusion and don't tie those together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I think I'd have to go back to what Mr. McGinnis said originally is, if, if we do, and we, we would have to sit down and try to work that out, but if we did come up with something, it would have to be consistently applied and and so if it wasn't, that's where we run into problems. So we will we'll, we can look at that. And if you have um, if you have a question, what your specific man who just had the question, if you your specific question, if you'll email that to uh, Brian Humphrey, then we can look at that and see if, if there's anything we can. Mr. McGinnis. Okay. Moving on to a couple more things before I wrap up here. Um, Scheduling your events to get your buses, <clears throat> please just make sure that you give us a, um, you know, a couple weeks notice if possible to give us your account. I, you know, we prefer you send us all your requests at one time. That way we can go ahead and get them on our calendar and our books. Um, when you get your schedules made out, just fill out a bus request for each time you need a bus and send them into our office and our trip coordinators will go ahead and put those on the calendars. If you have a makeup game, whether you're rained out or for some reason you have to cancel and reschedule, please call us to check to see if you can get a bus the day you're trying to make it up and reschedule it um, so that when you do that, there's not a conflict. Um, sometimes if you just you get rained out and you and the other coach decide you're going to play again tomorrow, well, then you call us at noon the next day and say, so our game was rained out yesterday. We need to bus today at 2. Well, we may not have one to give you. So... Um, if you could, just let us know when you plan to make things up so we can assure you that you'll have a bus today. you want to do that. If you're taking a trip with a team, please have one of your coaches, whether it's an assistant, you, a chaperone, somebody on that bus with those students. Um, you know, I had a coach ask me <clears throat> last month during basketball season, 
Well, well, my assistant's got a dentist appointment today, and I'm driving my own car because I got to do this after the game. And I said, "No, you can't do that. You got to have a coach on that bus." Uh, and they were going out of county too. So, just be aware that if you're taking a bus, whether it's in county, out of county, or wherever, you need one of your coaches on there, a chaperone, or somebody that's affiliated with that team to uh, to be there with the team. Okay. Any of you coaches, first of all, let me start by saying those of you that have got your own license to drive, I applaud you for that. I know that we've worked hard uh, over the last year or so. Mr. Humphreys has been instrumental in helping us with that um, to get some of the scheduling and some of the coaches to where they can drive your own buses because it makes it easier for you to go and do what you want when you want to do it. And uh, you don't have to be as much under our dictatorship as you, you you more than you want but we only have so many buses and we only have so many drivers and as you all know we have middle school sports we have high school sports we've got schools wanting to take field trips this time of year so i mean we can only we can only do so much and and believe me y'all would be amazed that if you knew some of the times y'all requested buses and we've actually got you a bus there to go when you wanted to um we don't look for any credit for that but i'm telling you we don't just get your request and say oh we can't do it and throw it to the side and say call them and tell them we can't go we don't do that we make every effort to let y'all go when you need to go uh, but there's times when i will have to call the school or, our, or one of our ladies will have to call the school in the office and say we just can't simply get you a bus at that time you'll have to wait 30 minutes or you may have to go an hour ahead we had a trip last week uh, there was a big I think chorus concert somewhere here in Niceville when one of the schools in Crestview wanted to leave at 2 o'clock right in the middle of the afternoon with three buses. Well, we, we couldn't do it. So we simply called and said, y'all can leave at 1, we can get you down there and come back. And So I'm just saying sometimes we have to do things and we ask y'all to work with us on that to make it possible for y'all to get where you're going. But those of you that are driving, I do applaud you for that. I know that I, I saw many of the Bruner coaches back in the fall that got their license. Uh, some Davidson coaches have recently got theirs um, and other schools as well. And I appreciate that because we're willing to train you all for free. If you're willing to get your license and drive your bus and you can go when you need to go and you can leave 30 minutes earlier than you might want to warm up or whatever, it makes it easier on you all. Um, and I certainly don't have a problem doing that. So I'm just throwing that out there. If you want to get trained at your school or one of your co athletic directors have coaches that want to get trained, simply call me or, or contact our safety CDL trainer. His name is Shane Lance. He's just been hired recently. Um, he took Tim Duffy's place, who's moved to another position in our office. But Shane can be reached at 833-6363. And he, he is our new safety trainer and uh, does the CDL training. And he'll be glad to tell you what you need to do. And um, I know we've got some in-service coming up for you coaches that already have a license this summer. We'll be getting you out of date for that pretty quick to let you know when that is so you can plan for that. Um, but other than that, I do appreciate all of you and what you do every day and for working with us when it comes to scheduling y'all's trips. Any questions for me? Thank you. Next up is Julie Perry from the Finance Department. She's going to talk to you a little bit about ticket taking procedures. Hello. My voice is a little low, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, before we talk about ticket taking procedures, just want to remind everybody that anytime you collect money, it has to go on a money's collected form. And y'all, is everybody familiar with with the money collected forms and checking them out? Just, just, and that's to protect you, so nobody can say that they gave you money, and, and where is it, and kind of thing. This, um, this ticket procedures memo is really long. I just wanted to point out a couple of things that just to make you aware of. Like on the first one, under general provisions. Just remember that you always have to have tickets for any of your events and the tickets have to be ordered by the bookkeeper and she keeps the tickets and issues them. 
Hi, Louis. <laughs> okay, and um, whenever they issue tickets, if you have like two different prices, like maybe adult and student, they always should be giving you two different colors of tickets so that you can keep track of what's being sold. Okay, let's see. Section three. It just goes through all, I mean, this is just a very detailed thing about issuing tickets and how you'd sign for your tickets and sign for your change form. Big thing is probably the selling and taking of the tickets. Make sure you have a ticket seller and a ticket taker for each event. Ticket seller sells the tickets, takes the money, gives the ticket. Ticket taker is gonna tear the ticket in half and give it to the half of it to the patron. The ticket taker has to stay with the ticket seller to verify the money. We never said that before. We always just said the ticket seller had to do it. But then they're not protected. There's only one person there with money and we need two people to protect each other, okay? And make sure that that ticket seller and ticket taker are not related. Um, I'm just trying to hit the big points. You know, anytime you have football games, you have to, they just turn in the money. I think with you guys, you're going to turn in the money to your administrators. Or if you're not a football game, you'll be able to either put it in the drop safe or turn it into an administrator. Is that what everybody does? We don't want anybody taking any money home. Okay. But that's, I'm just, so just kind of hit the highlights and there's a lot of details in there that you might want to and might not want to read. But does anybody have any questions? All right, sounds good. Everybody have a good day. I'm gonna tell you what, she's made an amazing recovery from where she was just a day or two ago. It was, we were talking to her on the phone and I was honestly shocked to see her here, able to, to make the presentation that she just made. Uh,